Peace and blessings be appointed to each of my brothers and sisters out there in the world. Salute to all the saints, all glory given to his highest. Be grateful for his long suffering. Be grateful for his forgiving spirit. Be grateful for all of his love, of all of his time, his mercy, his peace. For he is a great God, for he is a true God, and he has always been there for each and every one of us. For he is glorious by all the sins. All glory be given to Yah. Blessed be his name in Yahshua HaMashiach name, for he is worthy. Peace and blessings be appointed to my brothers and sisters out there. It is your brother Jehoshiah Israel here on this April 26th, 27th. I really don't know, family. But all glory be given to Yah. Family, before we get into the sanctuary for today, I just would like to reflect real fast on the last Sabbath that we had family the last Sabbath and from what I learned family I'm very grateful for all the older saints out here in this world as I look at my life now I'm about 38 years old family and if God gives me till I'm 75 years to be up on this earth and that's about 25 to 26 more years from now just to be able to praise him and honor him with that time, I would look at as it being an honor family. So coming back from the Sabbath weekend, I had to reflect and I was I was reminded that the same faith that you carry in your life, that you live and you stand for the most high. You praise him. You honor him. You, you sacrifice your own life to please him by being as he wants you to be. That same faith will draw so many different people into his kingdom just by you staying fastened to the truth. Your faith saves lives. Your faith builds up other people's faith. It's because of our our elders that came before we did our grandpas our grandmas our, our our aunties our uncles that stayed grounded in this truth to believe in god is the reason why we believe him now they have been unwavering they haven't been wishy-washy they haven't been straddling the fence they have not been backsliding as you've seen the older generation in your life those that are in your life in your heart that's close to you they have not wavered from they love of the most high Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Throw your hands in the air for you know you are blessed by Yah himself. They have not wavered from they love of God. They love of God has remained the same, strong, bounded down on his truth, not changing to the outside influences of the world, not going back into their old ways. It is a blessing, family. Your faith itself is a blessing because it's going to save so many different people if you can just stay firmly in your faith, family. I told you, family, as I, you know me, shouts out to the nine o'clock prayer healers, shouts out to the nine o'clock prayer warriors, shouts out to the nine o'clock prayer warriors, healers, and saints. You know your brother, we, we we love you, family. You know what I'm saying? All of us across this very world, you know what I'm saying? You know we love you. Shouts out to the 9 o'clock prayer healers, soldiers, and saints. And at this 9 o'clock, family, I'm always finding myself being grateful for the older saints. And I look at it as a very honor. However much time that the Most High Yah gives me to be upon this earth, to live, family, if I can live for Him with the time that I have rest left, will be looked at as an honor, family, an honor, family. So over the Sabbath, I was reminded several times that your faith will bring so many different children on this earth into the truth. Your faith will save lives if you can only stay grounded on the most high's truth. His glory, his grace, his statutes, his commandments, his limitations, his of wanting us to sacrifice our lives to live in the fashion that he wants us to live. Is it hard? I can't say I can't say wanting to give into sin is not 
I can't say it's easy or hard, family. I cannot, family. It's a it's a choice that you're making with yourself to please him. Is it hard to come out of world of sin? Yes, it is, family. Is it hard not to practice them things? But that's when your love comes in. How much do you love God, family? How much do you cherish him? How much do you honor him? How much do you praise him? How much do you self-afflict yourself to show him that you love him through fast and prayer, family? So looking at Whatever time, family, whatever time, family, when I walk through heaven's gate and to have 30 years on my back, the saying that I served him with all my heart, that is a blessing, family. That is an honor, family. My mom, a couple days ago, she told me that I remember when I was saved, family. I remember, family, I was seven years old from what my mom told me, too. She said, I did it all on my own. When the preacher said, it's time to baptize, do you want to be saved? For the, want to be saved for the Lord? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to live your life? At seven years old, family, I took that dive. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, family. As time passed and I got older, I walked away from God. But now standing back with him for this full 11, 11, 12 years, it feel good, family. I might have walked away being a young, foolish man, being beat down by this world, trying to conform myself into a life of sin. But family, he gave me the light. He gave me a way out. When God told me to get off them damn gangs and get off them damn streets, so I kill you. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said. He said, Jehoshaphat, I'll kill you. i kill you, Jehoshaphat. I will kill you. I will kill you. And then me, family, I was like, what? 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 Yeah. Yeah. What? What, 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 what did I do? What did I, what did I do? But I took him serious, family, and I got my life changed, family. I came up off them streets. I left them damn gangs alone, and I stopped being entertained by that life. He saved me from myself, family, out of the streets. And then people be like, well, you know, Jehoshaphat, God don't be talking. He God don't say nothing. No, nah, it's not the fact that he doesn't talk. It's the fact that people like stealing his glory and does not want to acknowledge his presence. That's the problem, family. God is talking to everybody. He's not a respecter of person. Ain't nothing so special about me that I'm so special than everybody that God would descend down to this earth and whisper in my ear, family. I'm no different than anybody. Just the factor that I'm going to take him serious in my life because I completely understand that life is a blessing. I completely understand as a man. That life can be gone in the twinkle of an eye, family. Nothing is promised, especially not tomorrow. So if I can live my life, family, and honor him with whatever time that he gives me, if it's 10 years, if it's 50 years, if it's 100 years, and to walk into his kingdom knowing that I was like the older saints that stayed grounded on his truth and that was not wavering to things and people of the society of this world, family, that is an honor, family. Family, to praise him, to honor him with your life, with the time that he has given you. So as I as I come back from this Sabbath weekend with the with the refreshing, with the, the new understanding, I can't say it's a new understanding for us all remembrance family that your faith will change lives. It will save lives. It will bring people into his kingdom. If you can only stay grounded like your grandma family, like your mama. Like your daddy, like your papa, like your nana. They stay grounded in his truth 30, 40 years, 50 years until they left this earth. And they still did not change just because it wasn't popular. We in, we in season all the time, family. You know what I'm saying? We the salt of the earth. We ain't changing for nobody up over here. And we loves the most high God, family. So to me, it would be an honor, family. It would be an honor to take this time. How old is you, brother? You're 25. How old is your sister? You're 32. How old is your brother? 45. From this point on, family, from this point on, if you can walk with him, if you can be as he wants you to be, and that right there comes with a price, family. You'll be looked at. You'll laughed at. You'll be scoffed at. You'll be ridiculed. You'll be the talk of the town. But this is a price that we have to give up, family, to get his grace and his honor. Don't get me wrong, family. I know he reigns on the good and the evil, but... I'm teaching my brothers and sisters out in this world to receive his glory of his treasures that he want to give to us. It's a shame, family. It's a shame. Like, 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 for instance, take this for instance. 
Some of your brothers and sisters will make it into heaven, family. But Jesus ain't got nothing for them, family. He ain't got no necklace. He ain't got no rings. He ain't got no hat. You ain't got no damn hat and you in heaven. Hold on. Hold on. You came, you went to heaven and Jesus didn't give you a hat, family? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You made it into the greatness of the beyond of the forever, family. And Jesus ain't got no necklace for you, family. He ain't got no rings, family. He ain't got no medallion for you, family. We want them treasures, family, that we have to store up right now, family, with all this goodness that we have down. And a lot of it would just be given from you staying fast into his words and staying true, family, with your your faith for the time that you have now how old are you you know what i'm saying you can take this time now how does your 19 what is your 21 you're 25 forget all the other people forget all the other people and all the other problems stay grounded on his truth family it will be an honor family it will be an honor family to live my rest of my life to serve him family you know, the master got something special for you, family. And a lot of your brothers and sisters, they going to be looking poor, family. I'm sorry. They ain't glory and everything like that. And they made it and everything. But the Lord ain't got nothing for them, family. He ain't got nothing for them, family. He doesn't even have a hat, family. But you know how our people is in this world now. They too worried about the fast money, the fast cars, the, the fast women. That attainment life, they're not trying to stack up anything, family. And you have your time now, family. Okay, family. Okay. Okay, family. Check this out. I got to be honest with you, family. I got to be honest. And you know, you know, family, I, I got to just come clean, family. I have to come all the way clean. And, you know, I don't even... Well, I know how to say this, but I got to come clean with you, family. And you be like, oh, Jehosa, what do you mean, brother? You got to come clean. What is you a devil worshiper, Jehosa? Is you a devil worshiper, Jehosa? No, I'm not a devil worshiper or nothing like that, family. But I got to come clean with you, family. Okay, now, I said, family, I said that in my life now that I'm learning to love my enemies, family. To say unto them that get on, get away from me. I don't want to be bothered with you. Uh, I don't want to say nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? Stay the heck away from me. But that's not good enough, family. I'm not saying that somewhere in that is some festering hate. I'm not saying that either, family. I'm not saying that, family. But now in my life, I put my big pants on family i put my big boy pants on spiritually family spiritually family and i asked the lord i asked him i said well you know lord i really don't know how to love my enemies and now you know your Lord is good, family. He's working on us every single day. He's working on our heart, of our compassion, of our peace. He is, family, every single day. And, you know, your master has got me to the point to where I can honestly sit here today and tell you that I don't have to hate them not to like they... How can I say this? I do not have to hate them not to like their sin, family. I don't hate them, family. I don't, family. I do not hate them, family. But I do hate their sin, family. I do, family. I do, family. Before, family, I just hated them, family. But it's not them, family. It's their sin, family. Your boy is, your, your brother right here, I am on a journey, family. I'm on a walk to please your master. And he has got me to the point of my life to where I can sit here and I can honestly tell you, I don't hate them, family. I just don't like they sin, family. I do not, family. I'm sorry that it went off. I, I, I just don't like they sin, family. I don't have to hate them not to like they sin, family. Straight up. That's where I'm at now on gaining this knowledge to love my enemies. But I got to come clean tonight, family. I got to come clean. What you mean, Jehosa? What you mean, Jehosa? Listen, 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 listen. At this point... Okay, when I, when I was when I worshiped the fake Jesus, I had a heart of a bigot. I had a heart of a racist. I did, family. I can I can honestly, family, I throw my hands in the fire all the time. I am but a man, family. If you can't learn now, then damn it, when the hell you gonna learn, family? The truth. The truth, family. 
So as I stand before you, Jehoshaphat Israel, with my hand in the air, family, I'm telling you, family, when I believed in a fake Jesus family, it still allowed me to carry hatred in my heart. This is when you know that you serve the false Messiah, family. You see all those other people, and it, it just because it's the pandemic don't mean people took a stop on evil. No, nah, family, not even. So you see the hate-filled people in this country. And then you see them and they will go to our churches and burn them down and put crosses in front of the yard. And at the same time, they say that they love Jesus. They serve a fake God, a fake master, a fake coming from a person that's coming out of a fake religion, family, a fake religion. My fake religion, my fake Christianity still had me hating people, family. Do you understand that? And if the fake if the fake Jesus that I was serving, family, it's, it's a real Jesus and it's a fake Jesus. The fake Jesus still had me out here committing fondication, family. I serve the real Jesus now, family. I, I serve the real messy act, family, now, family, in my life. And he does not allow us to do such things. When I believed in a fake Jesus, that I still was lying, family. I was still stealing. I was still cheating. I was still being a fondicator. I was doing all those things, family. Not putting God first, not keeping it holy on the Sabbath day, family. Come on now. I was doing all of those things, family, when I worship a fake Jesus. So I, I got to come clean with you. I serve the real Jesus, family. The real Jesus don't allow me to hate nobody, family. What did your brother just tell you, family? I do not have to hate them, family. I don't have to hate them not to like, not to like they sin, family. I don't, family. And that's where the hatred was kind of kicked up over. I'm not even going to lie to you, family. I have to come clean with you tonight, family. I used to serve a fake Messiah, family, and he allowed me to go back into that world and be, whoo, he had me doing all kind of stuff that I wanted to do, family. The real Jesus will not allow you to do any of those things, family. None of those things. You can't do none of those things. You don't even find no pleasure in doing it. So, family, I just have to come clean for tonight and for you to know, family, this is why there's a such thing as a backslider, family. This is why, family, because they serve the fake one. They're not putting their all, their whole into the word of God so they can change, family. They are not, family, at all. I served a fake Jesus, had me acting all them sinful things in my life, and there was no ground to change. I had to get deep into his word, family, with an honest heart humble family because I wanted to to change this is why you don't see so many different people changing in their life family because they're playing with the word of God family and they serve a fake messiah off of something that they heard family what did Jesus say what did he say oh he said that so you know I'm just gonna be like this and you know that's how they that's how it is family that's how it is with people family but you know it feels good Woo! It sure feel good to get that off my chest, family. It really does, family. I had to break even with you tonight, family. I had to, family. I did. So let's go ahead and get into scriptures for tonight. Okay, before we get into scriptures for tonight, I would like to read something, a poem that I had wrote. I got a date on it. You know what I'm saying? Your, your brother, I'll be thinking now. You know what I'm saying? I write something. I put the date on it and everything. Hallelujah, family. And make sure you come get yourself some of this nine o'clock prayer hour. We do this from Sunday night all the way to Friday night, family. Come get yourself some, family. Come get yourself some, family. Be with this family in spirit and pray on the behalf of all these people with all this ailment in this world. It's so much stuff to pray over, family. It's so much stuff to pray over at nine o'clock. Come with be come and be with us and you will be blessed, family. I don't even have to put my master's name behind it, family. Now, before we get into scriptures for tonight, I just wanted to read, read, read this poem that I had wrote so long ago. Because I think it was like last week. And it's called Love Family. Love Family. It's called Love Family. I lost, I just lost like 10,000 fake Christians. I, I just lost like, like 50,000 Hebrews, family. Just because I say I'm a Hebrew doesn't mean that I label myself with a black extremist, family. That doesn't mean that, family. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like half, half of the people who say that they are Hebrew 
Half of them don't even believe in Jesus like that, family. They don't believe in the Masiac, family, because they be walking with hatred, family. And I'm not supposed to spread hatred, family. So just because I call myself a Hebrew doesn't mean that I identify with a black extremist group. And you see how bad they got it, family. You see them, family. It's not my job, family. It's not my job to pass judgment on the next group of people to me. Oh, I'm going to go to their house. Oh, you a Jew. Oh, I hate you now. I'm going to do something to you. That's my job, family. You know what I'm saying? That is not my job to go up to white people and be like, well, you know, we the true children of Israel and y'all gonna burn in hell. Y'all gonna burn in hell. That's not my place, family. That's God's place. I am not the judge, family. I am not, family. I'm just living his truths, family. And a lot of people get blown in the dark. Let me go ahead and change this up to my pick. But a lot of people get thrown in the dark because they think, for some reason that they don't have to worship Jesus and do all the things that Jesus said to do family. That's why I just don't get it family. I don't, I don't get it at all family. Not even a little bit family. I don't family. I don't identify with none of them groups that want to kill and hate and own people. All I'm saying when I, when I identify as being a Hebrew, all I'm saying is from my, my lineage I come from the house of Israel, family. That's all I'm saying to you, family. The true children of God, family, when I tell you that I'm a Hebrew. I'm not a black extremist, family, by no means. It is not up to me to pass judgment on people. That's my father's. That's your father's job, family. Okay, now, family, now, when I wrote this, before I even read it, family, I just want to tell you, family, that love is a great tool, family, to use. I didn't see it in my life. Some of the coldest, crookedest, foulest, dark. I mean, dark family. Their soul is dark family. You know what I'm saying? Their heart is dark family. I didn't see the most coldest, cruelest people family with with the the ushering in of you giving them love. It like takes away from their black heart family. Love is a weapon, family. It is, family. And the world, I can't say that the world is swimming in hate, but the people are, family. Vile and disgusted and wicked in it, family. They are, family. They are. So, one of the greatest tools that you can use in this life is love. If you want to change somebody from the inside out, you have to start with their heart. And the greatest weapon that you can ever use against a woman or a man is love, family. I done seen some of the coldest people, family. And you know me, family. I ain't trying to hurt nobody's family. I ain't, I ain't bothering nobody, family. I'm not, family. If you don't want to hear about the Lord, family, we ain't really got nothing to talk about, family. You know what I'm saying? Because he is on my mind, family. Hallelujah for his glory. Hallelujah for his grace. Hallelujah for his mercy. For he is a great God. For he is an honorable God. Blessed be his name forever. For he lives, family. So, you know, you know your brother Jehoshaphat, Israel family. I ain't trying to hurt nobody's family. And I didn't watch the cruelest, coldest people give over into love, family. Little bit of love here, family. Little bit of love there, brother. Little bit of love here, sister. And boom, the next thing I know, the next thing I see is, hi, Jehosa. A good day, Jehosa. God is worthy, Jehosa. This is what I see. So you must use love as a weapon, as one of the arsenals, family. Now, we talked about your shield, family. We, we talked about your shield last time we were here in the sanctuary. Pick up your shield, family. I told you, your shield is your faith, family. You stand firm in the foundations of his truth. But let's talk about some of your other deadly weapons that you need in this war down here on God's green earth. And just like the devil, he be sitting up there and he be throwing fiery darts all single day. We got some fiery darts, family. We do, family. But nobody wants to use them, family. They don't want to use them, family. If I went down the block, family, and uh, what's up, brothers? Love somebody. Th th them Hebrews will laugh at me, family. They would, family. Nobody wants to love, family. And that's the most powerful thing that you are supposed to do. What your master say? What did he say, family? Love your neighbor. Love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor, to see him as yourself. Love, family. Love, family. Love, family. Jesus wants us to love, family. He does, family. He wants us to love, family. But why, family? So I wrote this 
And I want you to fasten it to your heart of your education for your spiritual walk with your brother here today in the sanctuary. And know, family, that love is one of the greatest tools that you can use in your arsenal against a people who are swimming in hatred, family. They send it in sin and they sinning in they swimming in hatred family and to pull some of these people out the fire family to pull them out the fire family you're going to have to administer love family don't nobody want it family don't nobody want it family and they will laugh family they will laugh at you family go down the street family right now family be like hey love somebody family they be laughing at you family it's the way it is family but i'm letting you know that you need love in this life and your master wants you to love. I want you to repeat after me. There is nothing too hard for your God. Hallelujah. It sounds so good. I'm going to have to say it again. Say it with me. To, say it with me right now, family. There is nothing hard for your God, family. He can do the impossible in your life to us as mere Men and women, mortals down here on this earth, some of these things are just so impossible. But to have him in your life, you can do all. I want you to say it with me. There is nothing impossible for your God. He can do all. Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah? Okay. Now let's go ahead and get into this poem that I love. I wrote it. I wrote it on... Um, I can I can hear some of the the heads of Hebrews right now. You weak, you weak, you love you want people to love you. Brother, you weak, you weak, oh that's weak. Oh, that, you jab take it, Jehoshaphat. You telling me to love somebody? These they, these Hebrews will kill me, Jehoshaphat. They will kill me, Jehoshaphat. Love, love. I want to crack the shell. We trying to we trying to deep down in the pit, family, and snatch some of these people up out of this world, family. We trying to reach it to the fire, family, and pull some of these people out of the damn fire with your love, family. Love, family. Your master wants you to love. They sit with a smile on their face talking about, oh, we know Jesus. We love Jesus. But they ain't trying to love nobody, family. They ain't trying to give no heart, no compassion, no peace to no body family your master wants you to love family okay now let's get back into this oh you a sucker Jehosa you telling me to love I don't know nobody in my family that know how to love Jehosa but you can brother you can sister you can learn right now to be as your master is you can say that you love him all day, but is you going to follow what he told you to do, family? And he wants us to love, family. I know it is hard, family, but it is there, family. You have it, my brother. You have it, my sister. I don't care about what none of them other Hebrews is talking about. Them black people. I don't care what they're talking about. We, oh, we want to hate Jehovah. I always want some strife. I always want to be talking about people and being a covetous person. I want to hate Jehovah early 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't even have no reason to be mad, but I got this damn look on my face. Hey, 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 say something to me, Jehovah. Say good morning. I will go off on you like a pit bull. Love, family, love. Okay, let's get into this poem for today. Now, the most powerful thing is love. Why we must ask ourselves this question. What is the purpose and the function? What is love limits? What is love's value? Love is freedom from affliction. The poison of confusion caught up in so much hatred that makes a person lost. To wander in the desert of sin, disloyal and treacherous to one's heart, void of having his holiness dwell in one's heart, mind and spirit without the kindness, the meekness that he loves and understanding of Yahshua. Yahshua said to love and to love. Deeply, for it is a covering to wash away the multitudes of sins, for it bears undeniable fruit that we as people had we as people bear witness to in the flesh to be humble before the eyes of men, gentle in one's treatment of others, patient, holding fast, not giving in to those amongst us who have the spirit to scorn, to mock, and to ridicule. One way 
of a peaceful soul to live tranquil with the uncertainty of the world and life bearing compassion. Sympathet sympathetic to those around us that fall in problems of the pit on the loss pity on the lost souls suffering and the misfortunes but on brought on by the hatred found in the heart excuse me family <clears throat> found in the heart and soul of a man to be patient with one another out of love if love is used right, it can be a weapon to those who live in the shadow of death. Love brings forth light out of darkness to bear the truth of love, transforming one's madness into love, to unharden the rock and the stone of some people would call their heart, to find someone lost in pure darkness and, to, and bring into the brilliance of the radiant truth, to give and to break the bonds of hatred, to set a person free after they have been slaves to the wickedness found in the heart, to give love to those that are heartless, to set them free. I know it is hard, my brothers and my sisters, but if you want to see change in anyone, don't stop the free gift of love. The seed of truth that you are willing to give that to others over a period of time will bring forth deep springs of life that cannot be contained by the hate. To love is to be free. When used, oft, often pierce, pierces right to the soul of a woman or man. Love is a weapon. So, family, I wrote that on April 21st. I know y'all ain't seen me in a while, family, but we're back on the grind here in the sanctuary to do your father's will, family. I got my anointed saint part-time, family. My anointed family set up part-time to be in here. And you know, family, you know, family, I'm just going to run it, family. What is it, Jehosa? All of his commandments, his stars, his statutes, his laws, his limitations, and anything that he has put on my plate, family. It be so much, family. And I know, like, my other brothers and sisters on this Sabbath, family, we're actually being holy, family. So I got time, family, to dive into his word, family. Your brother's in trouble, family. Yo, Jehosa, what, what Jehosa, why are you in trouble, brother? I'm waiting on my stimulus check, family. Oh, my check, family, my check, family. I heard the one preacher, he said, when you get your stimulus check, I want you to bring it to the church house. These people can't even pay their bills, pay their light bill and their gas bill and put food on the table and have the insurance. Are you talking about giving them some money? Family, I'm in trouble, family. I'm waiting on the stimulus check, family. They, they laid us off. They, <laughs> they laid me off and everything because this damn Kovac. And, and then I barely started working again, family. Everybody else got their check. I've been driving around listening to all the Hebrews and all the lines and all the black people. I ain't got my check. I ain't got my check. I ain't got my check either. I'm in trouble, family. I'm still waiting on my check from George W. Bush, family, in 1999, family. I'm still waiting, family. I'm still waiting, family. I still ain't received it yet, family. When is this damn check? gonna come family okay okay i was just playing i'm not in trouble <laughs> i want my check family i want my check family and you'd be like damn jehosa damn just, i'm just saying family everybody else has got it family all this direct deposit and all, everybody got okay 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 i just leave it alone i leave it alone but i'm still waiting family your brother over here i ain't got it either sister i ain't got mine either i'm still waiting like you you know what i'm saying brother well now you know is what what's what's today what is, what is today? It's April 29th, family. I've been waiting, family. I have been waiting, family. It's been like three, four weeks already. They're talking about, oh, well, you're going to receive it in the mail and how you file your taxes. That wasn't stopping the government from taking my money. I know that for damn sure. Okay, let's go ahead and get into studies for today. And, oh, let me change up my pick, family. Sorry. And for today, um... All these lessons that we go over, family, I, I don't know how long we're going to be in these studies, but you know how your brother is, family. So anytime you step into these studies, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Anytime you come over here to your brother Jehoshaphat Israel and you want to study with me, just know, family, that we're, we're going to be studying Isaiah and Hezekiah. You know what I'm saying? That's all we're going to be worried about for however long it might take, family. And you know, we serve a good, great God because he's always giving us, he's always reviving this spirit and giving us revelation of truth, of things that we just didn't understand. And you know, your brother, family, I'm still waiting on questions from the father. If, if it's something in the Bible that I don't understand, I wait for God to give me the answer, family. I do, family. He said that we are supposed to constantly be thinking about his scriptures and what he told us to do, family. So somewhere, some point, something was said in the word and my mind is just going over, going over, going over. But those things that I do not understand, God always brings us new revelation, family. So if there's ever something in the word that I don't understand, I don't preach over it, family, until he brings me the revelation of what it is. Do I understand every single thing that's in the Bible? I've been studying for a long time now, family, and I understand a lot. But I don't think, me personally, what I think, family, I don't think it's one man that can understand the whole entirety of the Bible. For it is something that is alive, that is living, family. Now, the words itself might not will not change family but people understandings of what they grab what knowledge that they bring in what they're be, what they're able to accept it changes family it does family so i wait on him and if there's ever anything that i just don't know you i can't preach over it family you know what i'm saying because i i don't know family i know what it say family i understand what it says but not in the context of what he wants me to know family and when those things are revealed then that's when i preach over him family you know up over here family you know it's precept upon precept line upon line read a little bit here a little bit family that's how you're supposed to do it family so if i don't go over it now family eventually over a given period if he gives me 20 years to keep on doing it family eventually i know in that 20 years family that i can say it then family you know what I'm saying within that time that's what i'm relaying to my brothers and sisters do i know a lot yes i do family study to show yourself approved yes i do family but those things that come hard to me it's a couple of questions that I'm waiting on, family. For real, family. Now, let's go ahead and get into this. So, family, family, family. Any lesson that we go over is going to be taught to us by Isaiah and King Hezekiah, family. Only, family, until we completely and until we run the course to see what the trials that Hezekiah went through. Because through his trials, it can bring forth life in you. It can bring forth life in your own life. Through the trials of uh, of Isaiah, everything that he had to do to prove himself to God, his loyalness, things that he had to do, things that happened to him. You know what I'm saying? We got to go through all of those things, family. All of them, family. But I'm pretty sure there's another man of God out there who would approach to, uh, teaching completely different than me. There is no teacher that is the same family, none family. And I tell you right now, from what the word says, that there is no no person that preaches the word of God that is greater than the other. But I'm here to tell you, there are some preachers out there that have a zeal for God. And I would think that they would be better. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what the words say. You know what I'm saying? We all have this zeal of this love of this compassion. But through their time, family, have developed this zeal for the most high Yah that I think that is, is better than uh, younger preachers like myself, family. You know what I'm saying? Because they've been doing it for 20, 25 years, 30 years. You know what I'm saying? That's that same spirit that we was talking about to honor the most high. I, yeah, I said in the beginning, family, it is a pleasure to serve him, family, to wake up each day and to serve your God, to not look as this world looks, to not act like these people that are caught in this world act, family. It is a pleasure, family. So from what the word says, he God said ain't no difference. We all fools in his eyes. You know what I'm saying? We all fools. You got to really sit there and preach the word. They just don't honestly believe me on what I talk. No, they don't, Father. They don't believe. He said a preacher is a fool. Why he said that for? Because God cannot believe that it would take a man to preach the word of God for you to believe in God, family. Does that make sense, family? It's sad, family. It's sad, family. It's sad, family. But you have heard it here today, family. I, Me personally, I do think that it, there are men 
that preach the word of God that have been doing it for so long that they are great men to me, family. And I, I pray for them all the time. Family, I do. I bless them and their ministry and all of that stuff, family. I do, family. But this is your brother's walk with God. God told me to break down his word, to teach it to where any man can understand it. That's what God personally told me to do. Family. He said, he said, Jehosa, you really understand the Bible. You understand the Bible so much that you can break it down to where anybody can understand it. Even the simplest minded person. That's what he told me to do, family. Break the word down to where anybody can understand it. So we're no won't be confused or be lost, family. Or you don't understand. And then, family, I'm not even preaching to older people. I can't I can't teach an older person, family. Older people don't listen to me like that, family. You know what I'm saying? What, what, could, what, what knowledge could an older person that came to this earth before I have been living in the flesh for more years than I have, can I teach them, family? So my, my focus is on people that are my age and younger than me, family. My whole ministry, family, is focused on just a couple people. Like I'm 30. I'm 38, family. Okay, I know some of my brothers, they're 45, and they don't understand. Okay, I can reach out that far, family, but I can't reach out to 50 years old and try to teach a man or a woman that's came to this earth before I can. I came. They don't understand me, family. They're just happy that I'm here, family, and that I love the Father, and that he has given me the will and the strength not to stop my audience, family. Of my brothers and sisters are people of my age that don't understand the word and people younger than me. I never came here to preach to somebody that's older than me, family. I never did that. That's not my job to do, family. I'm not even good as an older preacher. You have heard it here to today. My hand is in the air. I put it on Jesus Christ's name, family. I do, family. I'm not playing with you, family. Their zeal for him is stronger than my zeal is. And my zeal is at the zenith, family. It's at a peak, family. I'm at the mountaintop. I I love y'all, family. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, what was said, family? Any lesson that we go over here today until we have completely stopped our works of King Hezekiah and, I'm sorry, Isaiah. The one cool thing that I tell you off the top about King, King Hezekiah is his daddy wasn't no damn good family. And, and then that'd be like the most of people who live in the world. They live in a house and, and their parents don't even serve God like that. King has a King Hezekiah daddy was a ruthless family. He was evil family. He would go family and go to the church's family. And have all the trash, any trash that people would throw in a garbage can. He put them in the church and locked the door, family. This is how bad he is, family. Hezekiah daddy served gods that defeated him in wars, family. This is how bad Hezekiah is. He took his own sons and daughter and, and took them to the fire to be sacrificed to a foreign god in which his father did not serve, family. Hezekiah was one of the ruthless kings of Israel. Hezekiah daddy was and that's that's the simple of any anybody who live it's not necessarily given that your both of your parents is gonna love God like that but look at Hezekiah his daddy didn't even love God his daddy hated God his daddy had all the false worship and gods made of stone and wood all over Jerusalem family and the high and low places and closed down the churches and had the people serving a false God true Paganism family, being a heathen family, a heathen family, and Hezekiah made a stand in his life, family. He tore down all of the, the incense burning in high places, cleaned all the trash and the rubble out of the church, took all the false idols out of Jerusalem, and burned them, family, and burned them with fire. Because they fake, family. <laughs> They're fake, family. It's only one true God, the God of Israel. Blessed be his name and Yahshua Hamashiach name for he is worthy. So that's like anybody, family, anybody. You know what I'm saying? You born on the streets. You know what I'm saying? You be hanging with them knuckleheads. They not serving God. You're going to have to make a choice in your life. You know what I'm saying? You come from a, a family of heathens, family of heathens, family. 
That doesn't mean you have to be a damn heathen, family. You can come out of that. If King Hezekiah can come out of that, then that means that anybody, family, anybody can stop worshiping what they were doing. Look at your brother Jehoshaphat, Israel. I was serving a fake Jesus. I didn't even know the real Jesus, family. Shame on me, family. Shame on me, family. I didn't even know who the real Jesus was, family. Same thing like Hezekiah Daddy, family. He, you got to come out of that, family. You know what I'm saying? You have a choice to make, family. Right off the top, family. Right off the top, family. He got a gang of my respect for his upcoming of where he came from. He was completely different than his daddy was, family. His, he got the people to love the Most High Yah. Hezekiah, Hezekiah Daddy had the people turn away from the Most High God. Shoot, I feel sorry for the prophet Isaiah. God had him doing all kind of stuff. Well, you know, Isaiah, you know, I'm going to tear Jerusalem up and I'm going to send them all into captivity, Isaiah. Now, get butt naked and walk around. <laughs> get butt naked, Isaiah, and walk around the city and let them laugh at you and let them know. This is how you're going to be captured. You're going to be walking out of here showing your buttocks. You're going to be walking out of Jerusalem showing your buttocks. Had poor Isaiah walking <laughs> had poor Isaiah walking around all the villages and towns of Jerusalem butt naked telling the people. And they still didn't believe him, family. It's hard times, family. Hard times. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this because we are already pushing into 9 o'clock per hour. I'm sorry. I got to get up off of here. I will finish this page, family. I will finish this one page, but you know where your brother stands in ministering and gospeling and preaching of the spirit family of his word. You know where we at right now. You don't want to hear about Hezekiah or Isaiah. Find somebody else, family. You know what I'm saying? You want to get a, a deep knowing of what these brothers went through and how they all the lessons that they are going to teach us. Then you'll be with us, family. Now, now, family, now. From what Isaiah said, family, I'm going to ask you right now, family, is it is it is it wrong to drink? Is it is it wrong to drink alcohol? Now, right off the top, family, I'll tell you that it's a damn shame that some people will choose booze over God, family. They will, family. I kid you not, family. Your brother, I don't like being drunk, family. I do not like that feeling, family. Be woozy, room be spinning, be thinking about throwing up, can't get no sleep, waking up with a headache. Ah, oh, you can miss me with all of that, family. I love my sleep, family. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be refreshed in the morning time. Do you feel me, family? But to throw your whole life away chasing after a bottle of booze, a bottle of rum, the vodka, family. Is it wrong to drink, family? Well, look at a look at a one look at a one people, family. They chose booze over God, family. I'm telling you flat out, family, flat out right. They chose that alcohol. That means that person, and we ain't judging nobody. We ain't judging nobody, family, but let's look at the evidence that's pointed through people's lives of their actions. That man, we ain't got to say no names. That man stood in front of that liquor store drinking and asking for alcohol, money for alcohol all day, all day long. He stayed drunkard. He stayed drunk all day. Not one time that that man stopped what he was doing to give God some glory. And, you know, I'm going to be and say to itself, you know, I'm going to be clean for the most high. Yah. You know, what I'm saying I don't got to drink all day. I don't have to be a drunkard person all day. Some people will choose that bottle. Some people will choose that drug. Then to step into the reality to praise and worship and change their life around. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking, family. But will you be will you get drunk and what will you do? How do people act? Family, it's a place called a bar, family. We all know this, family. And people go to the bar, family. You be seeing the dudes get into a fight, family. Whole parking lot, windows busted, bar fight, all of that, family. Some people will take alcohol and they will need that alcohol to get into a fight, family. They call it liquid courage, family. Some people like Sister girl, she need alcohol to cheat on her husband or she might not cheat on him. She don't have the will. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like an enabler. It blocks certain things inside of you, family. It does. It's like a restriction. It's like a, it takes away restrictions outside of yourself, family. 
Some people will take alcohol and they will embezzle people. That man, he got drunk when he went home. He beat his wife, family. He beat his wife, family, because he was drinking, family. Those are the things that God doesn't like, family, for real. You know what I'm saying? And you have to understand, family, when people get drunk, they do all crazy types of things that normally they wouldn't do. That's what God has a problem with. And then for a person to choose that alcohol over him. Now, that's a problem, family. Ain't nothing wrong with drinking, family. There is not, family. I don't know of no Nazarenes up in here that took a, a oath to the Most High God that they wouldn't shave their hair or eat any walnuts and raisins and drink alcohol. Most black people are not even like that, family. They're not Nazarene like the Lord, family. So there is, I'm not giving you a pass and tapping you on your back and saying, well, you go out there and you like, Billy, drink all the damn alcohol you want. I'm not saying that, family. What I'm telling you, family, there's a responsible way to do certain things. There is. If you're drinking alcohol, as long as you don't drink to get drunken and then you be a drunken person, then you be wilding out doing all them things that people need alcohol to do. You think, family, that they will get a good bottle of some wine, family. What was my wine called? It costs $8.99. It come in a big old jug. It got the dude in the, the orchard. Calarasi, family. Now, if they, got some, if they got a bottle of purple Calarasi, family. And they had a couple glasses, you know, listen to some music, you know what I'm saying? Dance with their woman at the house and went to bed. That's not a problem. But if they took that six gallon bottle of Calarasi and drunk the whole damn bottle and then went out in the world acting and doing a damn fool, then that's a problem, family. What does the scripture say, Jehosa? Okay, I said there is nothing wrong with drinking. It's the fact that people don't know when to say enough is enough. And the cardinal mind, with their destructive impulsives, they have no restraints in people's actions. So that's what I wrote, family. What does the word say about it? Woe to those who raise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink, who continues until night. Till wine inflames them to the harp and the string and the tambourine and the flute and wine are in their feast. But they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor consider the operations of his hands. What does that mean, Jehosa? You heard what it said, family. Some of them people be drinking that alcohol until it inflames them. Some people wake up early in the morning time and alcohol is the first thing on their mind. They don't want to give God no glory. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to give God no grace. They too, they too worried about the Calarasi, family. They worried about the vodka, family. That, that, ding, six o'clock in the morning. I want, I want a damn shot. I, I want to get drunk. That's a problem, family. And what, what, what does the word say again? They rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink who continues until night. Just because that man got up early in the morning time drinking don't mean he was finished, family. He going to be drinking all the way to the night. That's why your brother say that certain people choose things over God, family. And in, in, in this instant in time, this man chose alcohol over God. He woke up early in the morning time. He started mixing all them intoxicating drinks. Then later on, they pulled out the harp and the string and they was dancing in the flute. And then somewhere in that, they got enraged, family. So if a person get enraged, what are they going to do, family? Look at look at the corner stores and, you know, I might be pointing the finger, but I'm not judging, family. I'm not judging, family. I cannot judge. I am not God, family. But, you know, half of them people that be on the corner and they be drinking all the time. You be seeing them all sprawled out in the street. Today she doing good. She ain't tripping. Her hair is together. You know, she going to be there tomorrow asking you tomorrow. But the, the next week, now she's fighting the air. You know what I'm saying? He's People walking by him. He's so drunk. He start barking like a dog, family. That's the problem, family. You know what I'm saying? That is the problem, family. What are you doing when you're drinking alcohol? Do you drink to get drunk? I'm cool, family. You can miss me with that one, family. I'm cool off of that, family. Okay, let's move forward to the next one. I'll throw in a side note before I get up off of here because it's already 19. It's, it's 915, family. And I'm trying to get this show up for tonight. But at the same time, family... I got to get to this nine o'clock prayer hour, but it's been good because, you know, your brother, I've been at the nine o'clock prayer hour since Sunday with all my brothers and sisters saying prayers in regards to you because, you know, we love you. Throw your hands in the air for, you know, you are blessed by the great God of Israel. 
Okay, 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 I messed up. I just want to say this, family. Okay, we're in this study, right? You must understand, family. You must understand. When you talk about black people, then you talk about everybody else. Can everybody get into heaven if they choose to serve God? Yes, they can, family. I, I can't say they can't, family. But in God's eyes, his chosen people are looked at different. Jehosa, I don't know about Hebrews, and I don't know about what you're saying. They said first you're saved, now you're saved, and you need you will go be saved for them. L listen, listen, sister, listen, listen, listen. You are from the seed of Jacob, of Israel family, of Abraham family. So God is going. God chastises everybody, family, every racial group of people, family. I'm not saying that, family. By no means, family. You know, we preach out of love, family. I love you, so I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, listen, family, listen. I'm not saying that he doesn't punish everybody. I'm not saying that. But black, so-called black people who live in America is God's chosen people. Now, you know, like, like, let's say, for instance, your kids, your nephews and your nieces came over, right, to your house. And they was going to be spinning around. They could spinning the night and they having all this fun. Some get broke. Some comes up messed up. Who are you going to be more mad at? Is you going to be more mad at your kids or are you going to be mad at your uh, your nieces and your nephews? Which one? You know, you're going to be more mad at your kids because they should have had known better. That is the direct relationship that black people got with God. We his chosen. He going to do more to us than he does to anybody because we supposed to know more family. We supposed to know better family. They come outside from 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 heathen nations and pagan nations family. Not like your own family. We should know better. This is the relationship. So before we even get into to, to King Hezekiah or Isaiah, you must understand, family. I'm not saying that God don't love everybody, but his chosen people are looked at different in his eyes. He's going to punish you better, brother. You might not never heard that you God's chosen people. But today, you know, now the truth has been given to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. OK, those other races. They could go out there and do all those abominable things. God, he going to slap them up, but he's not going to slap them up like he going to slap you up, brother. Like he going to slap you up, sister. Look at the analogy that I used. You know what I'm saying? Who would you be more mad at? Your children or your nieces and your nephews? That's everybody else. Everybody else that's out in this world, they're God's nieces and nephews. But you are his children. You know what I'm saying? And he going to tear you up, family. I said it. Half of my people don't believe me. That's all right, though. Now, let's move forward. Some people go shopping at the grocery store to buy food. This is how people sin. They go to iniquities with a cart and fill the same cart with sin, which is their wants. No different than people shopping for groceries. Can you believe that, brother? Can you believe that, sister? Can you imagine? Okay, you know how you go to the grocery store and you be getting all the things that you need for that night or you stacking up on food. Whatever you're doing, brother, whatever you're doing, sister, you shopping for your, your groceries, right? This is how people be sinning, family. They got a, they at the, they at the iniquity store, family, the house of death store, family, the house of sin, family, the desert of sin, family. They end it. They go with a cart, family, and then they be pushing around the store, family. Oh, I need some more lies. I, I think I, I, I need to start lying some more, you know? Ooh, 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 that backbiting. Put that in the, put that in the cart. Billy, put that, put that in the damn cart. It's a backbiting. Ooh, ooh, gossiping. Ooh, ooh, they got a special on gossiping. One ninety nine a pound. Let me get some more gossiping. Ooh, being a damn liar. Ooh, ooh, I, I, I got to get some of that. The, the lies that I did last, that was some good lies. We're going to get some more good of that right there. Ooh, ooh, being a thief. The thief is on sale. Thief is on sale for $7.99. Put that in the damn cart too. Okay, pushing. Ooh, ooh, adultery is on sale. 10% off. Oh, put that in the cart. Put that in the cart. Put that in the Fondication. Fondication is back. Ooh, they got Fondication. Do we got to go to the other store to find a good deal on Fondication? This is how people be sinning, family. If you can only imagine that sentiment, family, from what the words say, family, they just don't grab one sin, family. They grab a couple of sins, family, and then it's like they're shopping okay you heard what i said let's go ahead and go to the book of isaiah chapter 5 verse 18 woe to woe to those who draw iniquity with a cord of vanity and sin as if a cart rope that 
that say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the holy of one of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Can you believe that family? Can you believe that family? What you mean, Jehoshua? What you mean? They got all their sins dragging it down the street with a damn cord family and they can't wait to put more sin on that sin family. It's a damn shame family. Let's read it again, family. Woe to those who draw iniquities with a cord of vanity and sin as if a cart wrote that says, let him make speed and hasten his works that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come that we may know it. Family, don't be like some of your brothers and sisters in this world over at the sin store, filling all a whole grocery bag full of sin, dragging it like a damn cord behind them. We ain't supposed to have any of those things. We're not supposed to take pleasure in them. And we're definitely not looking for them. And me and your brothers and sisters up over here, we trying to use love, not so much as the covering to cover us from sin, but to cover some of the, the stupid mistakes that we make, family. And your other brothers and sisters, they up over there at the damn sin store, dragging all they sin behind them, family. You don't have to give in to them. And you definitely don't have to add these things onto yourself. It's called, rem I don't want to say reminiscing, but it's called to have an honest heart to repent, family. We don't need no cords. We don't need no sin. We don't need no shopping carts. We don't have to be like those out in the world, family. And just because they give in to one sin don't mean they're not practicing that other sin, making that one sin stronger than the other sin. We don't have to be adding any sins to our list. We don't have to be putting no sins on our rope. We don't have to be putting no sins in our grocery basket, family. I want you to think and use this to your advantage. Most of the people that you see, family, remember, we're not pointing the finger. We're just observing, family. And most of the people that you will see will be draggling that long cord behind them of their sin evil, family. Okay, let's move forth to the next one. Now, this is where people of the world are at present time. Jehoshaphat! This is where people at right now, sister. You know what I'm saying? You hear me, brother? As far as it, it's 2020 and everything like that. It, it could be 2020, the year of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But it's 2020. And this is where people are exactly all right. But, but Jehoshaphat, the Bible was written over 2,000 years ago, Jehoshaphat. I don't know about that. Listen, listen to scripture. You can go to Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, if you want. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter before sweet and sweet before bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to the man mighty at drinking wine. Woe to the valiant for mixing intoxicating drink. Whose justice who justify the wicked for bribes and take away justice from the righteous man. That's that's where people are right now in the world. It seems like evilness is glorified. OK, we have always known this, but it seems like it is running rampant in this world from your news, your media, the radio, people outside, people in the stores, people down the block. Everywhere you might go, family, this is where mankind is right now, and especially dealing with so-called African-American people. They up over here. They don't want to hear nothing good, family, like that. Uh-uh, family. They glorify evil and death, family. They do, family. They sing about adultery and fondication. You know what I'm saying? This is what God is talking about. You be like, what do you mean, Jehovah? They trading light for darkness, family, good for evil, family. All of the foul, runchiest things that's in this world you see right now, black people are lifting up. I'm not saying all. That would mean that all of us is doing it. Nah, that ain't even it. I'm not saying all, but for the most part, and we all know majority rules. If more people were like me and your brothers and sisters, then your people would be doing good. We would all be doing good. But they look to the leaders and the leaders amongst us. The people in power, the people who have influence, the young people, the singers, the rappers, the sports people. It's cool to be foul and to be wicked and to be evil. It seems like it's glorified in this world. Let's go back to scriptures. 
Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who care, who care, I'm sorry, who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to the man mighty at drinking wine. Woe to the valiant of for mixing intoxicating drink, who justifies the wicked for bribes and take away justice from the righteous man. That's where we at right now, family. So as long as we're not doing any of those things, family, you know inside of your heart what is right and what is wrong. It can't be no changing up on that. And if you can identify how everybody else is acting and come out of that family, you won't get lost like they are, family. They're, they're too much influenced by the things of this world and the people there in it and how they act and the things that they are doing. So it's like getting caught up, family. It's like being at the, the dock of a river. And then for some reason, all the water just start rushing down and the person gets car carried out into the tide. Can't, you can't grab to the banks of the river again. And that's where man is right now, especially where black people is. But that's where man is now. Now, family, I got to go ahead and get up off of here because I already then drifted off into our sit down. But, you know, you know, you serve a good, great guy and we be back, family. He gave me the power. He gave me the strength. We're going to get through all of this. We're going we gonna to do all of this, family. So all glory be given unto him. I got to get out to this nine o'clock prayer hour, family. I'm slipping. All my brothers and sisters, go ahead and put their hands up to Zion. All glory be given unto Yah, for you are worthy. Thank you for this day that you have given us. We completely understand that there is nothing that is hard for you, for you can do the impossible. Father, we come before you humble in this day, grateful for the life that you have given us in this day to show you, to honor you, to praise you, and to worship you. Father, I ask all these things in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. We also call him Jesus Christ. I ask, Father, that you bless the fruits of their mind, that you bless the fruits of, the, of the, my brothers and sisters' bodies. I ask, Father, that you strengthen their mind to be able to stay at seven steps ahead of any evil principality of wicked that would try to hinder my brothers and sisters in this world. Father, I ask that you bless the fruits of their body. I ask that you keep their body free of any disease, any pain, any ailment, any sickness. I ask that you bless their body and heal it and bring it back to full health. Father, I ask that you give them the strength of the days when they used to run free. And your green earth, happy to be your child. For all my brothers and sisters who have never felt your presence, Father, Yah, I ask that you knock them down with your love, Father. I ask that you knock them down for them to understand how powerful you are, how great you are, and how that you are all around us. There is no place that we can ever hide that your presence won't be on our life, for you are a great God. Father, I ask that you bless their sons, their daughters, their husbands, their wife, their complete household covered in the blood of the precious lamb. Father, I ask that you rain down all of your mercy, all of your blessings, all of your favor, all of your protection. Father, I ask that if there is anything that is in us that is un unlikely to you, that you present it before us and help us change from these ways. Father, I ask that the same love that you have inside, that you have given us through our love of the master, Jesus Christ, that it also brings more people into the perfection of your brilliant light. For you are a great God by all your standards. Blessed be your name forever in Jesus Christ's name, Father, for you are worthy. All glory be given to Yah. All glory. You can open up your eyes now. You know what I'm saying? You can put your hands down. All glory given to Yah. All glory be given to Yah, for he is the only one who is worth all your praise. Thank you to all my brothers and sisters who have prayed for me. You know I love you. Come get yourself side. You know I got to tell you again, family. I got to tell you again, family. Come get yourself some of this 9 o'clock prayer hour tomorrow, brother. You know what I'm saying? The, the five, four, six. Three, how many times you can give us? How, how many minutes do you got, brother? Sister, 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 how many minutes do you have to get on your knees for the Lord with your brothers and sisters in spirit? You know what I'm saying? Come with us. You know what I'm saying? Be with us Sunday through Friday night, family. Each and every night, besides from the Sabbath night. Now, this has been your brother Jehoshaphat Israel here in the sanctuary. I got to get going. Peace and blessings be upon you all in Yahshua HaMashiach name. This has been your brother. All glory be given to Yah.